Welcome to Family Health by Mini First Aid. Mini First Aid are the UK's leading family first aid provider and we are delighted to bring our latest podcast series to you, giving you all the information that you need around family health subjects. Thanks for joining. Series three of the Family Health podcast is sponsored by Savlon Scar Prevention Gel. Savlon Scar Prevention Gel speeds up healing, helps soothe pain and reduces the likelihood of scarring when used on minor wounds, superficial burns and grazes. And to be frank, with my six children in my house, cuts, scrapes and grazes are plentiful. So my first aid kit, saviour, is Savlon Scar Prevention Gel. Hello, I'm Kate and I am the founder of Mini First Aid and welcome to our podcast, Family Health by Mini First Aid. I'm thrilled that you've taken the time to listen to the podcast, whether you're in the car, perhaps you're cleaning the house or maybe you're relaxing with a cuppa or you're on your way to work. Our Family Health podcast covers a huge range of topics that might affect one of your family members. And if you've ever got a family health concern and are thinking, I'm going to Google it, please don't Google it. Have a listen to us instead. Uh, I'm thrilled today to announce that our guest this week is Alia Porter, who is a mum of three and a registered nutritionist who runs Porter Nutrition and Weaning Centre. She is passionate about helping parents with nutrition advice from their journey to becoming parents to pregnancy and beyond. And she's here to talk to us about all things weaning and nutrition today. So Alia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, Tell us a little bit. Um, about yourself tell us a little bit about how you came to do what you're doing now yeah um so as you said I'm a mum of of three Um, my eldest is 14 I've got uh, one in the the middle and a three-year-old as well so a range of different ages Mm. um and I I wear a number of of voluntary hats as well so um on a Monday morning I'm running a toddler group um and helping in the park on Sunday sometimes so um I I do all sorts of things but my passion around nutrition really started from doing it at school, so um, learning about nutrition in, from home economics. Um, and then I just decided I kind of wanted to try doing it at a degree level and did that alongside German at degree level. Not nutrition in German, but <laughs> nutrition and German. And um, uh, yeah, I love helping people, so um, nutrition is a great way of doing that. And um, yeah. Food, food. We all have to eat, don't we? So it's it's good to to know what we're eating. We have so many listeners with babies and young children, parents, pregnant women who are trying for a baby, all listening to our show, and there will be a wealth. In fact, we've got a wealth of questions for you. Some of those have come in from some of our listeners on questions about concerns and the right nutrition and the stages and all the things, the minefield that we find ourselves in. So. I'm delighted that you're going to help me tackle some of those questions today. Now, we were going to talk about weaning babies. So we were going to talk about nutrition because weaning is a huge milestone um, at Mini First Aid. An awful lot of the people that come to our classes, for example, are coming because they're thinking about weaning and they're thinking about choking prevention, for example. But also weaning is a big thing. It's a big focus area because they move from having milk and a liquid diet to having things that they're putting in their mouths and you're starting to have to think about diet and and nutrition and up until that point breast milk or your formula has done that job hasn't it and now you've got to provide this balance and it's just I mean it's just a whole massive world isn't it weaning Mm -hmm. that you know that takes you on um, a journey that we need to you know that we need to have some confidence in so we've got I've got quite a lot of questions for you actually but I've got quite a lot of things that I want to ask you about but um are there like you know what's the what's what are the nutrients what do what do children or little ones need and how can we make sure that they're going to get enough of them yeah good question so first the first of all the thing they need isn't nutrients the first of all the thing they need is the right environment great um, okay so they need at the point of weaning you're really setting the foundations for a healthy balanced diet and a good relationship with food it's really important to to remember that it's not just about the nutrients um so we're thinking about how we help our children to be interested in food to explore food um and i think we can put a lot of pressure on our children to make sure they eat the right thing mm-hmm. I, I love the podcast you did with molly um for, if, about body image so if yeah you listen to that already for listeners and um, i'd encourage you to do so um i i kind of think about nutrients being yes 
we need nutrients, mm -hmm. um, but th that expl exploration of food will help them to take the nutrients that they need. Right. So baby needs you to offer them a range of different foods. There are lots of um, weaning kind of 100 foods under one charts out there. I do have one free on my on the Weaning Centre website, but the focus of, of my one is not on let's just tick these off. Um, and it's not on, have you given your baby pizza yet? Because I've seen all sorts of things on those 100 foods lists. Mm. Um, it's about trying to get the variety in. And often when we're a bit sleep deprived, which we often are at about six months because teething started to kick in and you know, you've done a lot you've of run time out of babies. adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, having a list of vegetables, for example, or a list of um, carbohydrate, different carbohydrates can be helpful just as a, a prompt, really. Mm. Um, so um, your baby needs you to offer um, a range of different fruit and vegetables, a range of different proteins, a range of different starchy carbohydrates to offer things like dairy or dairy alternatives um, and, and get that variety in. Um, in terms of the nutrients specifically, we're looking at um, iron. Um, right. So baby's iron stores will have reduced by the time they get to six months. Okay. Um, and so it's really important we in include those iron rich foods from six months. The, um, um, the tendency is to go down the vegetable route first, particularly lots of, there's lots of narrative around the bitter vegetables, and that's really good. But we do need to, from six months, be giving them a wide range of foods, not just vegetables. OK, so um, I've mentioned already red meat um, and oily fish and legumes. Um, so those those are things that to, to try and include right from the very start. Right. Um, not so much on the nutrients side, and I know this will come up in um, first aid courses because I've spoken to first aid <laughs> leaders and this comes up about, um, around the allergies, actually mm. allergy foods. So those allergen, um, the common allergens um, need to be included from six months as well. Right. So again, this message around um, bitter vegetables can, can hinder us including those things. But the evidence says if we include them from six months and include them regularly, mm -hmm. then baby's less likely to develop an allergy. Right. Um, okay. So if you have already got a baby with an allergy, um, who's, you know, you've got cow's milk allergy from, and it's been identified before you would start weaning, um, or they've got severe eczema, they recommend you start including allergens from four months. Um, but from for most children, it's from six months. But and, include them from six months. And there's and more. And there's more advice on that, isn't there? So around yes. you know around introducing because I guess if your child has an allergy, to think about adding it would almost feel counterintuitive, wouldn't it? But so you're not yeah. adding that particular food allergen. So say for example they have yeah. cow's milk allergy. Yeah. You're not including cow's milk yeah. without um, supervision. Yeah. But of you course. would be including all the other allergens. Right. Okay. So to be right. Okay. So you. So it's the others then that you would in, yeah. that you would include. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to be clear. Okay. Um, so and when we just on, on on allergens, there's a. Um, I'll put it in the in the notes as well. Yeah. There's a um, article on my website that goes through what you're looking for um, and kind of how to introduce them as well, with some links to other resources. Great. Great. That's really that's really helpful. Um, so you talked about. Them so that so effectively that the diets actually for a lay person having talked about pregnancy and postnatal what your baby needs actually sounds quite similar so, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah is there anything extra do they need an extra bonus of anything is there anything that they need to have that perhaps is not such a a priority for us as an adult or is it just the same so babies can have a bit more fat than we can. Right, in terms lucky of them. <laughs> the proportion of their diet. Um, we're, we're saying from um, the baby should have whole whole milk or semi-skimmed milk um, yeah. rather than semi-skimmed or skimmed. Um, they she shouldn't be having quite as much fibre as we are. And so um, sometimes we go heavy, heavy in our own diets on fibre, um, but they shouldn't have quite as much because it just affects the absorption of the nutrients and they get up too full too quickly. And that's particularly problematic in babies who are being weaned on a on a vegan diet. Okay. Um, so there's some really good resources on the First Steps Nutrition website um, for vegan families, um, and I encourage you to have a look at that. Okay. Um, it, in terms of the kind of things we're looking for, we do um, we do need to have five portions of, of fruit and veg across the day, but we're not thinking about that from the very very start. So those first tastes. 
and I think of them as tastes because they're not meals. They might be a, a half a teaspoonful. Mm. Um, um, that you know, starting off with once a day. You don't want to increase that too quickly because otherwise, baby's tummy doesn't have a chance to, to adapt to that. Yeah. Um, also, they're likely to reduce the amount of milk they're having because they're just too full, and mm. they'll reduce it too quickly. Um, they will be reducing milk over time, but you want to make sure that they do that over time. So we're looking at by eight months. Um, some babies do it earlier than this, but by eight months they're having three meals a day. Right. Um, and those meals won't be full plates, um, you know, they, but they, they will be having three sections of food, if you like. Um, and then from, from 12 months they're having two snacks in there as well. So right. as a baby they'll be eating more regularly than an adult generally. Yeah. Um, but... Um, they still need that wide range of nutrients. They still need wide wide range of foods. Um, there are some foods to avoid, things like whole nuts. Right. I said they needed to include nuts because of their allergies, but um, whole nuts shouldn't be included because they're a choking hazard. Yeah. Um, they also shouldn't be having added salt, added sugar. Um, so it's not a case of giving them exactly the same as we have, um, but giving them that adapted uh, um, food. Um, Lots of families that I work with, because I run weaning courses as yeah. part of my work, um, will adapt their own diet for That's the baby. That's what we did. That's what um, we did. We said it was easier for us to sacrifice cooking with salt. And actually for us, we've never gone back. No, and actually now, when, when you go somewhere to eat and it's really highly salted, you can, you really, you can really taste it. It makes you really thirsty. And, yeah. and that's what we did. And then we adapted our diet and then portioned out mashed it up or pureed what what we'd had and babies joined in with what we were eating yeah and that's great because they get to see you eating it mm. and that's good role modeling um they get to have it at the right pace as well in terms of what the different textures are um babies don't need to start with purees they can start with pieces as long as they're soft i was going to um, ask you that so is there because you know there's a lot of and we talk to parents in our first aid classes but you know and parents are sort of battling that does it have to be baby led now or is there a difference or can you still puree is that or is that not a good thing so much anymore what's the what's your thoughts on that yeah one of the um the problems with the traditional what we would call baby led weaning yeah is that um certain foods are much more difficult to eat so think about like i mentioned red meat um pe- eating a piece of red meat when you haven't got teeth yet is quite difficult <laughs> yeah um and and so actually having um, something that is pureed or mashed can be helpful for getting those iron rich foods into mm-hmm. into baby also things like yogurt you can do it without a spoon but it's a bit messy um, yeah so um, <laughs> even if you I, give them a spoon though i mean let's be real it's in their hair whatever <laughs> yeah i mean weaning's messy you can't get away from that <laughs> yeah. um but i think we, we can end up being very militant on both sides and, and mm. say you've got to do it this way you've got to do it that way a combination of the two is absolutely fine um and when it regardless of the way that you do weaning it should be baby led in the sense that we're looking out for whether they are hungry or they're full okay so we're looking out for when they have um you know, start clamping their mouth shut um or they start turning their head away they start throwing food. Now, they might throw food from the beginning of the meal. That's not a sign that they're full. But if they start doing that later on. OK. Um, or if they're signs that they're hungry, they're kind of grabbing for food, like pointing to food, opening their mouth again. Um, so we're looking for those cues. And as long as you're watching for those cues, then um, spoon feeding is fine. OK. The issue is more that um, we're o- if you're overriding those cues, then then eating more than they need to. Right. Um, the other issue with spoon feeding um, is that babies don't move off the really mashed stuff early enough. So you really want to move them through the textures and get them used to things, which is why a combination of, you know, yeah, having something on say, the spoon and in Can you have a combo good. so they can Absolutely. have something that they can pick up? Yeah. And then they can have that with... Yeah, we found sometimes spreading something that we'd pureed onto something that they could hold. So they were then effectively feeding them the, themselves the puree. That's what I tried a bit. Yeah, but, uh, yeah or, or you, you make a puree or a, or a mash and then you give them a carrot stick, cooked carrot stick, nice and soft, from your plate. Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of the, of the two things. So there's but no... really important for safety that you, it is cut long and thin and it's soft, that it's not 
um, yeah. kind of rounded. So I guess, because one of the questions I had around was, was nutritional difference between baby-led and purees, but actually, from my understanding from what you've said there, is that actually sometimes you need the nutri- some of the nutritional items pureed so that you can actually manage them as a baby in your mouth. And sometimes, I mean, they're obviously better. Yeah, there yeah. are obviously recipes that you might people might say, well, you can get round it by having um, mints or something like that. Um, mm. But from my experience of, of the families that I've worked with, the combination works generally great. works better. Well, that's great. Talk to me then. I know we talked about pregnancy supplements and for women in pregnancy taking a supplement or not, and we discussed about where you can get your um, nutrients naturally from your diet. Mm. What about supplements for young babies and young children? Is that a thing or is it just heavily marketed to us? So much is marketed to it, isn't it? <laughs> isn't um, it? <laughs> the Department of Health recommend vitamin A, C and D for, okay. for babies um, and for up to five years old. Um, so that should be given all year round. Um, if the baby's having um, up to 500 mils of formula milk, yeah. And they don't need the vitamin D supplement because it's no in the harm milk. in take, Yeah, it's right. absolutely. There's no harm in taking the the supplement on top. So the um, the government kind of healthy start vitamins are um, available to people on certain benefits free of charge. Yeah. They're also in, depending on where you live in the country, um, they may be available free in your health centres, or you can buy them over the counter as well. Right. So um, certain shops will have them. So if you if you Google healthy start vitamins they have the recommended doses of vitamin a d and c um other vitamins aren't necessary um unless a child is really not eating enough okay um, they might be recommended to have a supplement obviously follow the advice of of a health professional if they are giving that advice yeah um but generally those those are the three they're looking for so those three in a supplement what form is the supplement is it a liquid is it something and where do you put it do you put it straight in the mouth or do you put it in the dinner or where do you put it yeah so um the healthy start ones are are drops right um you can get vitamin d sprays as well um but vitamin d drops can just go on the spoon and they can have it off the spoon even if they're doing baby lead they can still have it on the spoon yeah um I wouldn't necessarily recommend mixing in with food because if they don't finish their food and you don't You've want to not, force them to finish the sure, food, they won't get all the vitamins. They've not had their correct dosage. So, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Okay, that's that's really interesting. So, can you give too much in terms of vitamins? Can you overload them? Yes. So, um, certain vitamins are water soluble, so your body will get rid of them. Right. And so you'd have to have a lot more to overdose. Um, whereas other ones are fat sol- soluble. So, vitamin A and vitamin D are both fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. Um so yes you can you can overdose on them. You'd have to have a significant amount to do that. So obviously like with all medicines, keep them out of reach of children so they're not going to take the whole whole bottle. Um but um and I would recommend you stick to the, the recommended dose. Mm. In terms of food, it's unlikely that you're going to overdose on a, a specific vitamin or mineral um unless they're eating just that food or a lot of the same particular food so um i would recommend that kind of balanced range of things in the diet and then you won't have that issue of of overdosing so we talked briefly there about you know if a if a baby wasn't eating properly or didn't or they were nutrient deficient yeah as a parent we've got a lot of things to look out for haven't we and we're monitoring our children but how do we know and what do we do if we think our baby is nutrient deficient? The first thing to do is to ask for help. Okay. If you think your baby's nutrient deficient, try and get to see either a health visitor or your GP. Um, it may be easier to access the health visitor than the GP at the moment. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. But um, things you're looking for are whether they're gaining weight properly, and we're right. looking for them to track their their centile on the on the chart in the red book. Yeah. Um, so if if baby does drop a centile or even jump a centile and go up, that's fine as long as they don't keep doing that. Um, you don't want them to be um, jumping around. You want to be ideally tracking a centile. Mm. It's really common in weaning to change centile and then track a new one. So right, okay. um, it's not just a, a one-off. Um, the other things to look out for is whether babies are lethargic um, or they're just not looking particularly well. You know, mm. You as a parent know whether they are... Um, thriving in the way you'd expect them to thrive yeah um i would then go and ask for some some advice um we don't ne- tend to recommend um 
doing supplement, uh, sorry, um, deficiency tests on babies um, because actually there, there might be other things going on um, and it might be that um, they, they just need to be checked out by, by a health professional. So, yeah, GP or, or health visitor. Great, that's really helpful. Thank you. Now, I know that a particular passion of yours is around positivity and food and I think sometimes when you think nutrition it can sometimes become a headache or it's stressful and you almost view food in a different light you know and we also want to create right from the very beginning very positive relationships for our children and their food what are your thoughts on food positivity how can we have a positive relationship with our foods First of all, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> we're, I'm glad we're trying to <laughs> we're that. trying to fight against so many messages around mm. us that is not particular particularly positive, or they they're saying you know you can't have this or you have to have this, and um, trying to to focus on what you can achieve as a family. Mm. Um, you know, try not to be too hard on. Us. We're so good at bit, mum guilt is a horrible thing <laughs> for this real, mm. um, and um, you know what can you actually achieve as your in your family i think having a positive meal time so having conversations that are about food but trying to have conversations that are about what that type of food is in terms of its textures its colors um what it tastes like rather than saying that's good that's bad you have to eat this before you eat this you know if, if you start using those sorts of things or bribing children or um giving them food when they they're unhappy and sort of encouraging that kind of comfort eating process then that's not going to create that positive relationship with food i could talk about this all day and i cover it quite a lot in the weaning course and um, mm. because it's it, there's a lot to think about around meal times and trying to um give that positive impression also getting children involved with food so um whether that's in in the kitchen and cooking um my little ones like to sit in the high chair and put the passata on the pizza um, you know, it was like painting, but they were painting with food. Yeah, um, sure. It didn't matter if a bit went in their mouth because it's just passata, so yeah. it's um, not a problem. But it and it it was messy. I accepted that. Um, I understand that some families can't get children involved with the cooking process because um, time is too restricted, or they do the cooking after the kids have gone to bed, mm. trying then to get them involved with the with shopping. Um, you know, c can they pick a fruit that they want to try this week? And if they don't, then try it. It's not about saying, oh, well, you, you told me that you wanted that one, you should eat it. It's just moving on from that and trying to kind of get, increase that exposure without any pressure. My children will eat anything that they've chosen, anything. If we do that, if we set them, we have a lovely fruit shop local to where we live, and if we let them loose in there, they will literally choose and devour whatever it is, even if it's quite an unusual vegetable or... Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I interrupted you then, Alia. Tell me, tell me, tell me your no, next I was going to say, there's a, there's a free download on, on the Weaning Centre website around removing the pressure around mealtimes. Because Great. I think it's, it's something that we don't often think about. We think about the nutrition and, um, you know, how to how to make sure we get our, our children to eat vegetables. But um, if we put pressure on them, they're less likely to eat the vegetables, but also they, they're going to create that kind of negative association with, with that mealtime, negative association with trying new things, and it just gets worse from there. That's fascinating. We could talk all day, couldn't yes. we? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't we? Ali, it's absolutely fascinating. You've been listening to Ali Porter from Porter Nutrition, um, and she's been sharing with us her nutritional expertise uh, and it's been absolutely a fascinating conversation. Um, we always ask podcast guests when they come on uh, to talk to us, what's the one thing, if that's really hard, uh, so that's a challenge or a question, is there one thing that you would want people to take away from listening to our conversation today? Um, so first of all, be kind to yourself. And within that, I want to be rem remember when you look at social media and you see the perfect plates that people often post, um, think of them as a picture postcard. So beaches in the UK do not look like the picture postcards that you get. Uh, think of those Instagram pictures of baby foods being like that. It's not the everyday. It's not the thing that you're trying to achieve. Um, we need to parent in a way that is kind to ourselves. Um, and if you need help and you need guidance around something, reach out to someone to help you. Um, it's, there's no shame in asking for help. Brilliant. Ali, thank you. Um, 
on the show notes for today's podcast will be all of the links that we've been discussing as we go so there's some really helpful and handy resources uh don't forget to subscribe to the family health podcast because it means that on your chosen listening platform the weekly podcast will drop in uh, and you don't even have to do anything how good is that don't forget also to follow mini first aid on socials uh, and you can have the option to subscribe to our newsletter where we give you family health advice every week straight into your inbox and my final request for you today is that if there are subjects that you would like us to talk to find guests find experts family health subjects that you would like us to cover please don't hesitate to get in touch because you help us to drive to bring you the family health information now um that's everything from me today alia thank you so much for joining us today you've been listening to the family health podcast by mini first aid thank you for listening to family health by mini first aid i hope you found our podcast really useful and informative if you want to know more about mini first aid classes courses qualification courses or first aid supplies please do visit minifirstaid.co.uk or look us up on all your favorite social platforms at mini first aid i take savlon scar prevention gel everywhere with me so that i am always prepared for the many little and sometimes bigger accidents that my kids encounter. Thank you again to Savlon Scar Prevention Gel for sponsoring Series 3 of the Family Health Podcast.